in this video, I'll show you how I'm able to operate a fleet of three vehicles on Turo completely passively while having a full-time job. Let's get started. First step of this automation process is remote key handoff slash drop-off. Now, if you've done Turo for a bit, you will know that one of the most painstaking thing is having to wait for renters to come to pick up your car or dropping off their car because they're usually late. Now this completely removes that hassle. So you can do this in two ways. First is if your car supports Torogo. So Torogo allows renters to remotely unlock your vehicle using the Toro app. Uh, most of the newer luxury cars and Ford support it, but you might have a car that's older and doesn't support Torogo. In that case, you will need a lockbox. So this is the lockbox I have. I got this from Amazon. It simply mounts to the car window. So you get the window down, put the lockbox in, get the window up and you lock the car. And this works pretty well. Um, you can set a combination key and you can message the renter the key to unlock the vehicle. Now, the main thing to note about lockbox is you will have to use the official guidelines for Turo contactless pickup and drop off which means the renter will have to upload a picture of their driving license as well as a picture of them holding their driving license, just basically a quick selfie. Over my experience with Turo, this works pretty well. Most renters are able to do this with ease. Uh, now, one thing to note is if you have a smart car, you will also need a RFID blocking car slash a Faraday bag. So the car can't be unlocked while the key is in the uh, lockbox. Um, I will have a few links in the description for good Faraday bags. Uh, a lot of them are pretty big, so I had to cut them in half and use electrical tape. But you might be able to find a bundle with the lockbox as well as the Faraday bag. Now this solves the main problem that I had, right? Where renters will be really late dropping off the car as well as picking up the car. I could get the car completely ready. If I know there is a rental in like, let's say 12 o'clock, I can get the car ready even before I start my full-time job. Now the second step of this automation process is getting car wash subscriptions. So one of the biggest hassle is constantly having to clean the vehicle after each rental. Now, if you have a car wash subscription, you can tell the renter that they can go to this car wash and they will not have to pay anything and they can just clean the car. Um, now, this works pretty well. However, not every rental will choose to clean the car. In that case, you will need um, a quick system where you could quickly clean the car. So I use this waterless car wash. So you can use a microfiber cloth to clean any dirt and debris from the exterior. And this takes very few seconds. So I have a small vacuum cleaner that I can use to vacuum anything on the interior in the carpet. Sometimes there is food or dirt. Now the next step of this automation process is using a software to automate all of the messages. I use carsync.io. It's a completely free software and you can automate all of the messages. So I usually have two messages. One message that's sent usually 12 hours before the rental starts. This basically indicates and tells the renter what they will have to do, including you know taking pictures of their driving license as well as a selfie. And after that, I usually send them a message with the lockbox combination. Now, the second message is sent usually eight hours before the trip ends. And there are a few things that I include in this message. First message is to clean the car and mention that you have a car wash subscription that they can use to take the car. The second thing I tell them is to return the gas to its original level. Again, uh, tell the renter that if the car isn't returned, with the gas to its original level, they will incur some fee. And I have found that most renters are more lenient on making sure that the gas is on its original level so they will not have to incur any fees. The third thing I say is that the car is available for extension. Now about half of the renters actually uh, choose to leverage this. So, you know, in regular rental car, it might be a little bit of hassle to extend the trip, but with Toro through the app, they can uh, simply create the extension request. I, I usually approve it. Now, besides having uh, a log box, a waterless car wash, a vacuum, as well as free automating messaging software, I also use a few things to make this process much better. Now, the first thing is a security camera. So I run my Turo business right outside my house in the driveway. That's where most renters are picking up and dropping off the car. 
having a security camera is super useful. This is the one I use. It's a $80 uh, security camera from Google. I'm able to see when the renter comes to pick up the car as well as when they are dropping off the car. Now, another item that I use to have a peace of mind is a, a tracker on all of my vehicles. So I just use tile trackers. These are usually $25 and there is no recurring charges. And this works pretty well. Uh, I don't use air tags because air tags tell the renter or whoever is using the car that there is something following you and therefore I prefer tile and it works pretty well for me. Now the next thing I use is an ozone generator. If you've done Tour for a while, you will know that a lot of the renters do end up smoking on your car and there's nothing really you can do about it. Um, this thing essentially uh, creates ozone and it allows you to remove any of the smell of smoke. Uh, you can leave this on for about 20 to 30 minutes and the car doesn't have any smell and it works pretty well. That's all of the tips I have in order to automate your Toro business. Let me know if there's any issues or mistake in this video. I'll correct it in the description. Thanks for watching.